Um, hello, everyone. This is a recorded presentation for the Richmond Highway BRT project, project update for September 2020. I want to go a little bit through our agenda today. Uh, you can see here, we will do a little introduction, project overview. We'll talk about our current project updates and then our, our next steps and how to stay involved. I am Vanessa Aguayo with the Fairfax County Department of Transportation. I work within the Capital Projects and Traffic Engineering Division, and I am the BRT Project Manager. So here, this next slide, you can see a little graphic to the right, which is uh, the rich, this is the overview or alignment for the project. Um, this is an effort to not only plan, design, but actually construct a bus rapid transit system between Huntington Metro Rail Station and Fort Belvoir. You can see on the graphic on the right is we'll have nine BRT stations and it'll be constructed in two sections. Uh, section one will be from Huntington Metro Rail to Sherwood Hall Lane or uh, within the, uh, the what's referred to as the Gum Spring Station. And our section two will continue from Sherwood Hall Lane to, uh, to pass Jeff Todway to, on to Fort Belvoir, where is our last station. Um, I'd like to highlight here to the right, you can see there is another current project that is being led by the Virginia Department of Transportation. Um, you can see here that'll extend uh, between uh, Sherwood Hall Lane to Jeff Todway. And that project includes a uh, widening, but most importantly, reserving the median for the BRT project. If you want to know more specifics or more details on that project, you can find their uh, website here on the bottom of this slide. What is bus rapid transit? It's a high quality public transportation service uh, designed to be fast, reliable, and con more convenient than your traditional bus routes. It'll operate much like a rail service, uh, like the, the metro rail service that we have in Washington, D.C., but uh, here it's on a dedicated transitway. So we'll have more flexibility and we'll be able to deliver this, this system at a lower cost uh, with using just basically vehicles or buses on rubber wheels instead of your, your heavy rail. For more information on the benefits or other details, background information related to the uh, Richmond Highway BRT, here's our website at the bottom of the slide. If you uh, go to our fairfaxcounty.gov website or, and put in just Richmond Highway BRT, that's another way of, of being able to find it. So let's get specifically into our project updates uh, for today. The first one, we want to talk a little bit about design. You've been following the project last September 2019. We showed our 20% our design level and, and one of those had identified uh, the possibility of closing of, of forts and road to right in, right out. Um, Later on, we did some public outreach with the community and we found that, that was not an, an ideal situation. So we were going, we went back and we uh, came up with four other alternatives to kind of look at what could be done for this intersection. And, and so we had up options A through D and you can see here to the rise option B. Um, and through stakeholder uh, input, community input in our, uh, our higher our DOT leadership, uh, the decision was made that Fortson Road will remain open and operate as it does today as a full access signal. So you can see here again, uh, Fortson Road, you'd be, you'll be able to make a left in, a left out, a right out, uh, a, a right in into a Fortson Road. We have also updated our road maps. They are now available on our website. Um, as long as we continue through this design, we'll, we'll continue to refine the plans and, and also update. Uh, I'd also like to add that the project team is working on an interactive map that will hopefully be available soon. What that'll allow you to do is put in an address uh, for any for any of the properties or, or your community around the corridor and you'll be able to zoom in specifically to the surrounding area or the location so you can see how the design or the alignment for the Richmond Highway BRT project is looking. Um, we are doing um, finishing or, or in the process of, of creating an environmental document that's known as our NEPA document or our National Environmental Policy Act. 
Um, you can see here we're in the early stages of getting a draft to the Federal Transit Administration with the hopes of getting a final signature on this environmental document uh, sometime early this winter uh, of this or early next year. Uh, for funding, our, our BRT project is accepted to the Federal Transit Administration's uh, project development or PD phase. It's our first step into uh, getting being in line to receive grant funding. We were accepted March 13th of this year. Uh, we do have a laundry list of things to complete. Uh, we just talked about our NEPA document. Uh, we have to finish our preliminary engineering, our management plans, and all of these uh, things need to be completed or a list of items need to be completed uh, within the two year time frame. So let's talk about these details for funding. At the 10% design level, we have an approximate cost estimate of 730 million. I'd like to point out this is, of course, subject to change as we continue to refine our engineering and design. But you can see we're a little bit uh, under 50% funded, and the committed sources are, are coming from the state, from local, regional. Uh, we do have some federal funds, as you can see here, that are being applied to the project. Um, then we have also been looking for um, future sources, one of those being the Federal Transit Administration's Capital Investment Grant, CAG, um, specifically the New Starts um, grants. Um, and we're looking for about 288 million. Let's get into schedule refinement. In May 2020 of this year was the first time that our, the project did major adjustments. Uh, if you've been following the project, you know back in 2015, the Department of Rail and Public Transportation finished an alternatives analysis that identified uh, bus rapid transit as the recommended transit alternative for the corridor. So, and as part of that study, they thought that section or um, section one could be built by 2026 and section two by 2028. And again, this was all conceptual planning level. So now that we've gotten a chance to make to further design, do survey, uh, look at project decisions and various needs, and, and really just significantly have more detail than previous studies or schedules. Um, we we have had a change. Um, you can see here major factors that contribute to that update or change are our environmental, ongoing document, uh, utilities, design changes and enhancements, which were done and continue to be done to to complete and um, create a better project. Uh, a right of way, you know, is sensitive, so we want to make sure that's done correctly. And finally, and probably the biggest one is construction sequencing. So. What does that mean? It means that our detailed, uh, we have a new detailed BRT project schedule, um, and this refinement shows a schedule completion date of 2030. Uh, we are looking uh, for further information and, and looking to update that schedule because as part of this new information, uh, the Virginia Department of Transportation, and we've talked about their project a little bit, um, has also come out with a new schedule that has changed uh, under those refinements. So we've had to also update to reflect the coordination with that project. Um, there's other things going along going on or along the quarter, such as the Huntington redevelopment at the station and just external events. So as we continue to follow on those projects, our schedule will be regularly updated. But again, the project team will main focus will be to continue to look for ways to reduce the project timeline. And now we're going to talk a little bit about right of way, uh, the acquisition and process. So first, uh, FCDOT will need to acquire land or right of way from private property owners. But as part of that effort, we will be following uh, the guide for property owners and tenants. Of course, private property rights are protected by both the Virginia and United States constitutions, and each property impact has been carefully considered uh, so that we minimize the needs for acquisition. Um, FCDOT is following county, state, and federal transit administration's procedures, which ensures that property owners are treated fairly and respectfully. Uh, more on property impacts, we will be discussing this in more detail at an upcoming public information meeting. Uh, project team members, when the time comes, will be meeting individually with impacted property owners along the corridor. 
And for more information, and, it, and it's a great resource, we've created a right-of-way page on our BRT website, and that is here in this or box for anybody interested who wants to know more and have more information on the process. So next steps in, in staying involved. Um, our, our next step is to have a public information meeting sometime this fall. Um, potential topics right now that we're considering uh, we, we like to go through the project status. Uh, an exciting one is to talk about BRT station design and, of course, branding. And throughout this whole process, of course, continue to gather uh, public comments and your input to make this a better project. So how to stay involved. Again, this process will be most effective and the best with the input from the public and the people who live, work and travel along the corridor and really just spend time there. So here again is our website, uh, uh, our website information and email dotbrtffxcounty.gov. Again, what you can find on our website is uh, updated maps that shows the current design of the system. Uh, you'll be able to read a project newsletter and sign up for um, email updates uh, that'll specifically let you know of when we have events or um, public, whether it be public information meetings or virtual information meetings. Um, you can always submit your questions and comments to the team. And finally, uh, another great way of getting seen in contact with us is the Fairfax County Alerts. Um, and please choose the category Richmond Highway BRT Project Updates. Finally, if you've missed any of the materials from any of the previous public meetings, they are all posted on our website and available online. So with that, I'd like to just thank, your, thank you for your time tonight or today. And uh, again, we, we welcome all comments and hope that you continue to stay involved in our project. Thank you.